Dreamer, the home of Bigfoot. Heading out to Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Uh, Stop to see Salem Sioux and uh, be testing out the Canon R5 and 100 to 500 millimeter telephoto lens and uh, on all kinds of wildlife, not like that. Well, we made it to Teddy Roosevelt in like eight and a half, nine hours from Duluth, Minnesota. And uh, easy drive, 75, 80 miles an hour the whole way. Well, across North Dakota anyway. And looks like we're gonna have nice light this evening. We're gonna go into the park and uh, yeah, see what we can find. Stay tuned. There's three of them. <coughs> Ooh. Spotted a couple bison kind of on the top of the ridge and the sun was coming up and it was an orange orb. So we're gonna see if we can maybe silhouette them. Well, not really a shot there, but good hike. Get out and stretch the legs. You can wave uh, something white and pronghorn are very curious creatures and they'll sometimes come in and see what's going on. Very curious. So I was waving the cannon lens back and forth and Ryan was waving his uh, lens cloth, I think, and uh, 
yeah, they came in and gave us a nice look. Got a nice, some nice contrast, I think, between uh, the pronghorn, which were in the sun, and the shaded background. Oh, has a. <laughs> well, we were, got up to Cougar Cave and I kind of glanced up. I'm like, wow, that rock looks like a rabbit sitting right in the entrance to the cave. And I'm like, oh, that is a little cottontail. And it would have been a really neat photo because he was perched right next to a shrub and he was lit by the sun and the cave was deep black uh, but he ran off. Let's see if I can get up and out of here. There's a back exit. Some funky that's lichen or what those orange spots there. I'm in Cougar Cave and uh, I see there's a back exit here, so I'm going to try and get up and out. petrified tree trunk Nice trip, see you next fall. Oh. I got a coyote. Uh, <laughs> way up that valley, just went in behind those trees. Okay, you're gonna need your tripod as a spotting scope. Or your camera is fine. You see? You see that? Well, we just witnessed a badger hunting with uh, at least one, maybe two coyotes, and a third coyote showed up too. Uh, our third 
time seeing this in the same area at Teddy Roosevelt over three different years. Just uh, crazy. And uh, they were, the coyote and the badger were kind of hunting around a cluster of rocks and uh, trying to flush something out. Oh, hold on. They got some. The badger's... I don't know, maybe not. They're going over to another... came down the hill, the coyote leading the way, and uh, Ryan noticed that it saw something I mean, and just locked on and just full sprint. The coyote went after it and the badger was <laughs> running behind on his short stubby legs. And uh, I, I was trying to get on, I was on the badger and uh, while I was doing that, Ryan saw it, the coyote grab a, a, a prairie dog. Oh, you got one. Who did? Coyote, down in his mouth. Oh, I don't see the coyote. Straight that way. He's running like mad. Oh, they're fighting. God, I can't see the coyotes. Um, oh, I got it. Okay. And then the badger ran up the hill after him, and uh, now the three coyotes are kind of wandering around on top of the hill, and we're thinking maybe the badger reclaimed the prairie dog from the coyote. Okay, now there's two on the top of the hill. Yep. Two on the top of the hill. Three, there's a third. He's being submissive. Three on top of the hill. Yeah. I wonder if he's got the prairie dog in there somewhere. He must. So the badger, that's why they call it cooperative hunting. It's cooperative until somebody gets the prairie dog and then it's everybody fends for themselves. Oh yeah, the coyote's on right up there. Let's see if we can get a photo. Somewhere, I can't see him right now. Yeah, all right, I got you. Second coyote diagonal to down to the left of the one on the ridge. Yeah, definitely. The badger somehow got up there and got it. That had to have been what happened, because I see three coyotes and they're all just hanging out. Well, it's getting pretty dark. We've been just watching the three coyotes up on the ridge waiting for the badger, which we think got the prairie dog and is eating it in a cluster of junipers up on the hill. and. Uh, I think I agree with Ryan that, yeah, once whoever gets the prairie dog, the coyote relies on speed to get away from the badger because <laughs> it's all animal for themselves. And the badger, if he gets it, just relies on his uh, toughness and ferocity to keep the coyotes at bay. Um, and this time the coyote got it and ran up the hill and the badger kind of looked in a few other prairie dog holes first and then 
went up the hill after the coyote and we think he probably rested, wrestled it away from him. So yeah, pretty darn cool. It's getting dark. But uh, that's what it's all about. These trips, you might drive and hours of nothing. And then you have moments of uh, excitement. Yeah, keeps you on your toes. All right, and a lot of this video was shot with the one, the Canon RF 100 to 500 with a 2x converter, handheld. Yeah, and you can see it's uh, pretty nice. So that is uh, it's kind of like the holy grail, you know, auto focusing with a 2x converter at and. Uh, while handheld and just the in-body image stabilization just keeping it kind of rock steady uh, yeah pretty awesome wouldn't have been possible a week ago with my old equipment all right we'll check you later see ya have a good night this is beef what beef Bouillonne, beef, beef, what? <laughs> Bouillonne, what is it? Something like that. Beef stew. Beef stew, he says. Looks good. And potatoes. And all heated up on this Coleman stove, which was a wedding gift to Bridget and Sparky. Thank you, Jamie and Betsy. And it has been with us on every trip since 2004. Which can't be right because we were married in... Okay, I can't remember when we were married, but... <laughs> oh, wait, 2006. You may need to delete this footage. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Cooling down, the stars are out. Milky Way is out. Life is good. unit of Teddy and goal is some bighorn sheep hopefully and maybe see an actual buck mule deer in the park and uh, yeah maybe check out the cannonballs what are the cannonballs? You'll find out soon. How's that for a teaser? No big horns yet. Uh, we checked the old CCC campground and uh, we know they'll come down to the river to drink a little Missouri at some point. We just gotta find some. <laughs> Bison coming. Joining the party. spotted this herd of bison in the drinking in the Little Missouri River and got lucky uh, went into the campground and yeah they were right near the campground so trying to find an angle here some kind of shot not sure it's gonna happen but uh, 
beautiful yellow in the cottonwoods and reflecting in the water. We'll see what we can get. second of Ryan and I have come back to uh, Coyote Valley. I'm going to see if lightning strikes four times. And we're down in the valley floor this time, so less visibility. If something does go down, we'll be very close. It was 4 p.m., sunset's at 6.18 p.m. So we're just going to hunker down here for a couple hours and see what happens. Ryan's over there. To communicate by hand signals. Well, that was pretty cool. A, uh, I spotted a golden eagle just kind of coming up the next valley. And then when I reached down to grab my camera, just in that split second, he made a right hand turn and kind of used the, the bluff right in front of me. Got a blind, he kind of came right around the edge of it into the prairie dog town. Just zip it. I mean, just low, maybe 30 feet off the ground. And I, I couldn't get on it with my camera, but uh, the uh, prairie dogs were alerted and they, they made it to safety. But uh, wow, pretty cool adult golden eagle hunting. It's like Ryan might be. Okay, Ryan's got his lens out, so I'm gonna see what's coming.
Well, the sun has gone down and no real action, no coyotes, but um, yeah, as Wayne Gretzky says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Chicken penne pasta back at the campsite tonight. The two packets? Yep. Looks good. Not bad. Chicken penne. It's almost done. Wind advisory for our area. Let's see how windy it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. We awoke today to forecast of 25 to 30 mile an hour winds, and gray skies, and a little chance of rain. You gotta use whatever you got, so probably not the best day for wildlife. So uh, we're gonna have some long exposures with eight stock neutral density filter, blowing grass, leaves on the cottonwoods. Uh, yeah. Gotta be creative on a day like this. Yeah, some people don't know. Oh, there. Wait, yeah, wave my cross. Here comes baby. Well, day three here in Badger Valley, and uh, Ryan's up one draw, and I'm kind of down on the valley floor, Got about four hours till sunset. <laughs> but uh, we've had some several golden eagles, a couple adults, an immature, a bald eagle, red-tailed hawk, 
all kind of making the prairie dogs a little nervous. Still waiting for Coyote and Badger team. Team Coyote, Badger, Kayadger, Badjody. Yeah, the hunting buddies. Give it a few more hours here. It's always that anticipation of what you might see that keeps you going. But yeah, no, uh, no coyote tonight, no badger tonight. But that's the way it goes. Seems like a lot happens in this valley. We've had mule deer, including a couple bucks, pronghorn, antelope, coyotes, prairie dogs, bison, and of course the badger. So, yeah. And a beautiful sunset here. And we're gonna go eat soon. Get a burger. Well, I'm gonna get this sunset here. Bevings. Bevings from Denver. Six, seven, eight.